Hello, my name is Dr. Diwan S. Raja. Today I will discuss about the anatomy of the diaphragm. So the diaphragm is a musculotendinous partition between the thorax and the abdomen. This is is a muscular tendinous partition between the thorax and the abdomen. Okay. This is called the diaphragm, also called thoracoabdominal diaphragm. This is the largest diaphragm in our body. We have several other diaphragm like pelvic diaphragm, erogenital diaphragm. We have diaphragm shella. So this is the largest diaphragm. And it contains muscles and tendons. So it contains skeletal muscle and tendon. It has multiple openings and multiple structure passes through those openings. So this is the diaphragm. This is the muscular part muscular part okay this is the central tendon this is the right cross this is the left cross okay we got the diaphragm so if you hold the diaphragm in the anatomy lab ideally it is a sheet of muscle skeletal muscle sheet will hold it is a it has two domes right dome is a bit up left dome is a bit down okay so we have two dome right dome and left dome So we got the diaphragm, there's two domes, you can draw in this way, one dome is here, then a plateau, then another dome is here, so two domes, and this is the central tendon okay then we have to know what structures are above the dome what structure is below the diaphragmatic domes okay so we go there the diaphragm okay. so here we we'll get the lung here, one lung is here, okay, lung is here, another lung is here, okay, and in the middle, this area is for the heart, so this is heart, this is one lung, this is another lung, okay, so over the dome of the diaphragm, we have the lungs, on the central tendon or plateau of the diaphragm, we have the heart. What structures are below the diaphragm? Suppose this is the right side. Suppose this is right. This is left. Okay. On the, on the right side, we we'll get the right lobe of the liver. Right lobe 
a b liver we we'll get right kidney and right suprarenal gland right kidney and right suprarenal gland renal gland here so these structures are below that this is above and here we get the left lobe of the liver of the liver part of it left lobe is smaller than that of the right lobe we we'll get fundus of the stomach fundus of the stomach we we'll get spleen here on the left side we we'll get right kidney and right we we'll get left kidney not right kidney here the left kidney the left side left kidney and left suprarenal gland okay so you got the location of the diaphragm it is a partition between the thorax and abdomen above the diaphragm the thoracic structures like on the right dome of the diaphragm we have the right lung on the central tendon we have the heart on the left dome of the diaphragm the left lung okay below the dome of the diaphragm we have the right lobe of the liver right kidney right suprarenal gland okay here on the just below the left lung below the left dome of the diaphragm with the left lobe of the liver that is smaller than that of the right lobe of the liver fundus of the stomach spleen left kidney and left suprarenal gland okay we got that the structures above and below the diaphragm okay we got that so diaphragm is a sheet of tissue like that a sheet of tissue here okay we have skeletal muscle here tendon here okay we have skeletal muscle skeletal muscle we have tendon the central tendon it is covered above by the diaphragmatic pleura diaphragmatic pleura it is covered below by the parietal peritoneum parietal peritoneum okay parietal peritoneum lining epithelium of the diaphragmatic pleura and parietal peritoneum is simple squamous epithelium where well, there is mesothelium like that of the pleura or peritoneum lined by simple squamous epithelium in between them we get the skeletal muscle we get the tendon okay we got that now as because this is a musculotendinous structure it is composed of skeletal muscle and tendon we must know the site of origin of the muscles of the diaphragm okay the diaphragm takes origin the muscles of the diaphragm take origin what are the sources of origin behind that g5 process number 1 behind that g5 process of the sternum of the sternum the lower six coastal cartilages and the ribs and the ribs and the ribs from the lumbar vertebra 
from the lumbar vertebra okay by left cross and right cross right cross okay we got the origin again it takes origin by two slips from the from the G5 process or J5 process by two slip. This is the sternum, menobrium, body of the sternum, G5 process will get origin from here, origin from the costal cartilages and their joining ribs. Okay, and also you get origin from the lumbar vertebra. So if you go to this model, this is the diaphragm, lung is above, heart is above the central tendon area. Central tendon, central tendon also extends to the dome of the diaphragm, okay, just immediately below the lungs, okay. So this is the diaphragm, the partition between the thorax and the abdomen. This is the central tendon. We have multiple opening like vena cava opening, it's the facial opening, aortic opening. These are the major openings. Okay, we got the muscles, muscular origin. Okay, where they insert these muscles? These muscles inserts into the central tendon. Okay, the muscles inserts into the central tendon we got that we got the origin of the diaphragm now we go to the origin of the muscles of the diaphragm and its insertion now we must know the the openings Openings is same as the hiatus. Hiatus opening aperture very much interchangeable. In case of diaphragm, hiatus and openings are always interchanged. So we can call also hiatus of, of the diaphragm. We have major openings, we have minor openings. Major opening, we have three major openings. We have three major openings okay three major openings what are those one is the vena cava opening vena cava opening number two we have the opening that is the esophageal esophageal opening or hiatus same thing okay then we have the aortic hiatus so aortic opening okay opening or hiatus same thing okay we got that we must know the vertebral level of those major openings and the contents of those openings first of all vena cava opening it is at the level of intervertebral disc between intervertebral vertebral disc between T8 and T9. Okay. Is a opening? This is at the level of the T10. Aortic opening, the lower border of the T12. Just remember it that way. 8, 10, 12. Okay. So top is the vena cavern opening. That is a facial opening. Vena cavern opening is a bit right. Is a facial opening a bit left of the median plane. Aortic opening again a little bit left of the median plane. Okay, they are close to the center. Okay, so we got that. And in our anatomical position, we discuss this bilobed structure. And certainly the crust of the diaphragm is posterior, okay. 
we got that now we got the vertebral level of the major hiatuses so what are the contents of the contents of the hiatuses hiatus is same as the openings like the inner caval hiatus or inner caval opening okay hiatus what are the contents of inner caval hiatus we have the inferior inner caval vena cava where it goes inferior vena cava it has course inside the abdomen in the thorax it is very short course it penetrate the diaphragm okay it penetrate the diaphragm through the central tendinal diaphragm this is the vena cava opening okay suppose here this is the vena cava opening vena cava opening or hiatus okay hiatus what vena cava is the inferior vena cava okay we can call it inferior vena cava hiatus or just vena cava hiatus what are the contents of vena cava hiatus certainly we have inferior vena cava here ivc inferior vena cava and terminal branches of the right phrenic nerve and terminal branches of branches of right right phrenic nerve okay right phrenic nerve so content of the vena cava opening is the inferior vena cava and terminal branches of the right phrenic nerve right phrenic nerve goes to where it goes to the under surface of the diaphragm it innervate the diaphragm plus it also innervates the gallbladder so sometimes some people has inflammation of the gallbladder cholelithiasis cholecystitis they may have referred pain to the shoulder right shoulder okay we got the vena cava hiatus then we we'll go to the esophageal hiatus so we have inferior vena cava here plus we have the right phrenic now then we we'll go to the esophageal esophageal hiatus or opening okay we have gone through the vertebral level t10 what are the contents we have the esophagus left gastric vessels vessels means artery and vein okay then we have the anterior vagal trunk anterior vagal trunk we have the posterior vagal trunk poster posterior vagal trunk okay we got that so important is the famous left gastric vessel left gastric vessel means left gastric artery left gastric vein left gastric artery is a branch of celiac trunk celiac trunk is a branch of the abdominal aorta left gastric gastric vein is a tributary of the portal vein okay anterior vagal trunk posterior vagal trunk look at that this is not anterior vagus nerve it is not posterior vagus nerve it is trunk okay how they are formed anterior posterior vagal trunk they are formed from the esophageal plexus okay so vagal trunk vagus nerve sympathetic nerve come together to form esophageal plexus you get anterior vagal trunk posterior vagal trunk we may have multiple anterior vagal trunk fibers multiple posterior vagal trunk fibers so we have to say vagal trunk it contains the vagus nerve fibers plus sympathetic fiber so anterior and posterior vagal 
trunks. Okay, we got that. Anterior vagal trunk passes anterior to the lower part of the esophagus. Posterior vagal trunk passes posterior to the lower part of the esophagus. Both of them arises from the esophageal plexus. Esophageal plexus is formed by mostly by the left vagus nerve and right vagus nerve, but contributed by the sympathetic nerve fibers from the sympathetic ganglions. We got the esophageal hiatus. That is, that should be here. Then the esophagus, like a star-shaped lumen. Then we have anterior vagal trunk, posterior vagal trunk, and the left gastric vessels. Of is the esophageal opening of the diaphragm. Esophageal hiatus. It is important to remember that esophageal hiatus is covered by the muscles of the right crust of the diaphragm. So it is inside the right crust of the diaphragm. Although it is a little bit left, to remember that here. Esophageal hiatus is located in the muscles of the, we can say, is surrounded by the muscles, is surrounded, surrounded by the muscles of the right crust, remember that, not left crust, right crust, right crust, this is important, right crust, muscular part, tendinous part, it covers, it surrounds the esophageal hiatus that help in the maintenance of the esophageal sphincter mechanism, okay. We got the esophageal hiatus. Now we'll go to the aortic hiatus or aortic opening. Or we can call it hiatus. Okay. Okay. What is the vertebral level? T12. Okay. Aortic hiatus. What are the contents of aortic hiatus? Contents. Contents always to say aorta. What aorta? The descending thoracic aorta becomes the abdominal aorta at the level of T12. Okay. Then we get the thoracic duct. Thoracic duct, another content of the aortic opening. Thoracic duct opens where? Thoracic duct enters the mediastinum, posterior mediastinum. It ascend through the posterior mediastinum, superior mediastinum, go to the root of the neck, and the thoracic duct opens at the junction between the left internal jugular vein, left subclavian vein. Okay, so thoracic duct it begins from the cisterna chile below the diaphragm. Okay, we got aorta, thoracic duct, we'll get a gyrus vein. Okay. A zygous vein will, will be a content of posterior mediastinum, will open into where? It will go to the superior vena cava, it will open inside the pericard, it, it, it will go to the superior vena cava inside the pericardium, a part of the middle mediastinum. So, content of the aortic opening is the thoracic duct. A gyrus vein. Okay. Aorta A gyrus vein and thoracic duct. We may get hemi A gyrus vein. Hemi A gyrus vein. May or may not. Okay. So we may write plus minus. Okay. It may go through the aortic opening of the diaphragm, may not go through the aortic opening of the diaphragm. Okay. We got that. So we got A gyrus vein. A gyrus vein is formed in the abdomen. The junction of the subcostal vein and ascending lumbar vein, it enters the thorax through the aortic opening of the diaphragm 
is the content of posterior mediastinum and partly content of the middle mediastinum it opens into the superior vena cava okay we got that so now we have covered the openings of the di diaphragm the major openings again this is this opening vena cava opening what is the aortic opening between the left crust and right crust is the aortic opening this is the aortic opening okay it will also contain thoracic duct you get thoracic duct thoracic duct okay it will contain a zygos vein maybe hemi a zygos vein okay yeah, this is the contents and this is surrounded by the right crust and left crust and there is an endless connection between left crust and right crust is the median arcuate ligament okay so we have another term median arcuate ligament what is that it connects the right crust left crust in front of the aorta okay what type of opening the aortic opening is so aortic hiatus this is osseoaponeurotic osseoaponeurotic because posteriorly it is bounded by the 12th thoracic vertebra anteriorly by the median arcuate ligament okay how about the esophageal opening esophageal opening this is what that that is muscular okay how about the vena cava opening vena cava opening that is tendinous can call aponeurotic tendinous okay we got the openings of the diaphragm okay now we'll go to the blood supply of the diaphragm blood supply okay we discuss that our diaphragm is a flat sheet of muscle tendinous structure with two domes so some structure artery supply from above some structure supply from below okay we have to find out those we have the superior phrenic artery we have the inferior phrenic artery we have the musculophrenic artery so just remember the phrenic word phrenic means something related to the diaphragm we have the pericardiacophrenic artery we have the intercostal arteries okay We got the blood supply again the superior phrenic artery branch of what descending thoracic aorta inferior phrenic artery branch of what this is the branch of the abdominal aorta musculophrenic artery pericardiacophrenic artery are branches of what these are the branches of the internal thoracic artery intercostal arteries are mostly branches of the descending thoracic aorta we got the blood supply arterial supply okay venous drainage will be like th these arteries corresponding arteries we have the venous drainage okay so we got the blood supply now we we'll go to the nerve supply of the diaphragm nerve supply nerve supply it has skeletal muscle so it should have some motor innervation so contraction of the muscle and we know that 
diaphragm is the chief muscle of inspiration without diaphragm we cannot inspire okay so nerve supply motor it is the phrenic nerve this is to provide motor and sensory okay sensory phrenic nerve what is the root value c3 c4 c5 so you must remember c3 c4 and c5 remember c3 c4 c5 keep the diaphragm alive okay these are coming from the cervical plexus okay how about the peripheral part we have the lower intercostal nerves nerves that will provide sensory innervation to the periphery sensory innervation to the periphery of the diaphragm periphery of the diaphragm so what is the sensory innervation of the central tendon of the diaphragm and such should be phrenic nerve. We got the nerve supply. Now I'll go to the lymphatic drainage. Okay. From the superior surface of the di diaphragm, it will go to the parasternum. lymph nodes and also the mediastinal lymph nodes mediastinal specifically mostly posterior mediastinal spinal lymph nodes this will go from the upper upper surface the lower part will go to the pre aortic and lumbar lymph nodes okay we got the lymphatic drainage okay so we got lymphatic drainage then we go to explain the embryology of the diaphragm okay. embryology we'll go just briefly embryology source of development of the diaphragm we have four sources number one septum transversal it will contribute in the formation of central tendon of the diaphragm then we have the dorsal mesentery of the esophagus of the esophagus that will contribute in the formation of what the crust of the diaphragm both together is called crura of the diaphragm left crust right crust crura of the diaphragm okay then muscular part initially mostly it is contributed by the Pluroperitoneal membrane, pluroperitoneal membrane, but mostly eventually, even in the fetal life or early in the late embryonic life, it is contributed mostly by the ingrowth of body wall muscle okay muscular muscular in growth of the body wall okay we got we can say body wall major term or mesent kind okay this is a source of development of the of the diaphragm start from around the fourth week of intrauterine life okay 
let me explain its nerve supply. So our nerve supply is from C3, C4, C5. But my diaphragm is here. How it is it is inhibited by C3, C4, C5? Because these structures develop in the embryonic life at the cervical somai 3, 4, 5. Okay, initial development is up cervical somite 3, 4, 5. So they receive blood supply from, from the, those somites. Okay. So then when the heart goes down, body folding, folding changes, differential growth of the body, then diaphragm goes down. Okay. We got the explanation of the C3, C4, C5, why it innervates the diaphragm. Okay. We got that. So, we got the blood supply, nerve supply, and the embryology. Okay. What is the action of diaphragm? Action of the diaphragm. By contraction, it goes, the, the dome becomes flattened, more or less flattened. So there will be increased intrathoracic space, decreased pressure in the intrathoracic region, so we can breathe in. Then it returns back on expiration, that is passive, so we breathe out. This is the idea. This is the chief muscle of respiration. Okay. So what is, then we'll go through we have gone through that part. Now we'll go through some of the clinical anatomy or clinical anatomy. Okay. So one term is called hiccup. Hiccup. Or hiccup. Okay. What is this happen? Hiccup or hiccup that opens, that happens when there is phrenic nerve irritation or there is efferent and efferent pathway to the medulla oblongata of the brain stem is irritated due to some type of stomach surgery or thoracic surgery or some type of head injury. Okay, so there will be breathe in and suddenly the glottis of the larynx, it closes the the passage of air to inside that will make a sound that is the hiccup or the hiccup or hiccup that happens okay so we have a lot of management we manage according to the cause we can give some type of breathing exercise which is some confined uh, pocket of air so people may be unmindful may take care of that hiccup or the physician will do whatever is required to manage hiccup or hiccup okay got that one of the clinical anatomy then we we'll get multiple other type of other type of importance that is clinically significant okay let me write it again clinical anatomy anatomy we have a lot of hernia associated with that of diaphragm what is hernia? Protrusion of any viscous through any weak point of the body. That is our hernia. Protrusion of any viscous. Protrusion of a viscous through a weak point. Okay. That is the hernia. So what are the hernia associated with that of the diaphragm? One is the congenital diaphragmatic heart hernia, congenital diaphragmatic hernia, diaphragmatic hernia. Okay. What happens? So this is the diaphragm, this is the diaphragm. There may be a gap here, so intestine will go to the thorax. 
intestine go to the thorax, congenital diaphragmatic hernia. Okay. It is usually in the posterior lateral aspect of the left dome of the diaphragm. Why this happen? Because left dome is formed later than that of the right, right dome of the diaphragm. Right side we have also protection by the large right lobe of the liver. Okay, this is one. Another is called the parasternal hernia. Parasternal hernia between the sternal origin of the diaphragm and the coastal origin of the diaphragm. Okay, so we get parasternal hernia there. Okay, then we may have hiatal hernia. It may be congenital. Usually, it, it happens in the later life, okay, the adult life. Hiatal hernia, what happens? Esophagus may go to the thorax or gastroesophageal junction may go to the thorax. Uh, esophag I mean, the what happens in hiatal hernia? The fundus of the stomach may go to the thorax or the gastroesophageal junction may go to the thorax due to large esophageal opening of the diaphragm here yeah. large esophageal opening of the diaphragm it may be congenital and it may be acute what happens the fundus of the stomach this part may go through that okay or it, it may remain there but the gastroesophageal junction may go up to the thorax that may happen so congenital diaphragmatic hernia is also it is another name it, it goes through a foramen okay it goes through a foramen suppose this is that this is the foramen here there may be a gap here and it is called foramen of Bogdelak. foramen of Bogdelak. okay foramen of Bogdelak. Bogdelak. okay Bogdelak. okay there is a congenital diaphragmatic hernia we have another term that is called eventration okay Eventration, eventration of the diaphragm. This is almost like that of that of the congenital diaphragmatic hernia. But what is the what is the difference here? Idea is that diaphragm is good. But there's no muscle there. It is just like a membrane. So, like a membrane, it's intestinal content, abdominal content will go there. Okay, you go there. There is the eventration of the diaphragm. So that may compress both the congenital diaphragm to hernia. Eventration of the diaphragm may compress the lung. It need surgical intervention. Okay, we got that. We we'll get another term called hemi diaphragm. Hemi diaphragm. Okay, what happened? If we have section of the both the phrenic nerve, life is not compatible. People will die within a few minutes. But if we section a part of the one of the phrenic nerve, then we we'll get hemi diaphragm section of a phrenic nerve not both okay phrenic nerve is a lateral we get hemi diaphragm so one side of the diaphragm will be paralyzed because phrenic nerve is the sole nerve supply to the diaphragm what will happen we'll get paradoxical paradoxical movement of the diaphragm movement of the diaphragm what is the paradoxical movement of the diaphragm during inspiration our diaphragm should go down during expiration diaphragm again should make big dome but in case of hemi diaphragm due to section of a phrenic nerve there will be paradoxical movement of the diaphragm 
so when the healthy diaphragm goes down the unhealthy or section phrenic nerve diaphragm will go up that is the paradoxical movement of the diaphragm okay we got the clinical anatomy again we have to summarize the diaphragm musculotendinous structure this major opening it is mainly minor opening we may mention the minor openings or hiatuses okay minor opening okay just the parasternal region between the sternum and the costal region of the diaphragm okay we have the parasternal opening parasternal and this is the passage for the musculo it is the passage for the superior epigastric artery epigastric artery that is a branch of the internal thoracic artery okay this is a crust right crust left crust this is important to us right crust it extends lumbar 1 lumbar 2 lumbar 3 left crust this is the left crust left crust it extends lumbar 1 lumbar 2 okay and just behind the lumbar 1 lumbar 2 lumbar 3 we may have we have actually the passage of the splanchnic nerves okay passages of the splanchnic nerve splanchnic nerve we have the greater and and lesser splanchnic nerves greater and lesser even the least splanchnic nerve okay lesser splanchnic nerve that goes behind the crust of the diaphragm okay so we have the medial arcuate ligament here over the 